Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name's Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. And I mean, it is just a crazy day out here. Today is July 18th. And I've got some stories lined up for you here. Biden lackey tells CNBC to fix inflation, ditch fossil fuels, and boost green spending. Right. Next one. Oil extend gains as EIA confirms crude draw rising fuel inventories. Pretty interesting here. Taking a look at Canada, oil and gas exports are increasingly important for Canada's economy. Very important there. Good news. India ups LNG imports in June. It's very important for India to help increase their LNG and reduce the uh, carbon there. I want to give a shout out to Elon, to Elon Musk. Elon Musk explains why Tesla's robo taxi event is delayed. So we want to cover that here for here just a little bit. But let's start with our first story here. Ex-Biden lackey tells CNBC to fix inflation, ditch fossil fuels, and boost green spending. On a July 12th segment of CNBC Squawk Box, Jennifer Harris, the director of the Hewlett Foundation's Economy and Society Initiative, lauded massive government spending on cleaner energy sources as a potential cure for inflation. Notably, she had seen as uh, previously served on the Biden administration. At least energy is moving to a set of cleaner energy sources for the grid that not knowing that don't have the kind of inflationary channels that oil and gas do. She is so mistaken. We've had a moment in the Inflation Reduction Act and other public investments that we've had to sever some of these traditional channels for inflation. She is 100% wrong. CNB anchor Joe didn't seem impressed. He brought up the massive cost of switching energy sources and asked Antonio if the transition to beat inflation would be worth it. At least he asked. He added, solar and wind may very well have been our main source of energy, but they simply can't today. They're net losers. And if you look at the Inflation Reduction Act, by the way, not only are they helping strangle reliable sources of cheap energy like coal, oil, and natural gas, but on top of that, they're funneling more scarce resources into solar, wind, which again are net losers. Hats off to him on that one. Harris had the cheese pod offer this uh, absurd cure uh, immediately after the CNBC host, Melissa Lee, brought it up. The IRA is an inflation driver. I applaud them. Tony called out the Biden administration for allocating $7.5 billion and then just seven charging stations two years later. It is just flat amazing the amount of money wasted. Monthly inflation has averaged 5.4% under the Biden administration as the president signs massive spending bills after massive spending bills. But to the end users or the consumers, energy is well up over 30 to 35%. That in, in the last three years impacts everything. So inflation may be only averaging it hit as a high 9%, but the effective impact to consumers is extremely high. What I do know is that the Fed's hands are tied here because the government is spending trillions of dollars it doesn't have. I couldn't agree more. Anyway, hats off to Newsbusters. That's where this story came out of. Let's go to the next story here. Oil extends gains as EIA confirms crude draw, but rising fuel inventories. Crude oil prices went higher today after the U.S. Energy Administration reported an inventory draw of 4.9 million barrels. It was on top of the 3.4 million barrels for the previous week. This was, was in line with the estimates provided by the American Petroleum Institute. Tuesday's draw was 4.4 million barrels for the week of July 12th in the, in the throes of the high energy demand. But the EIA reported mixed changes in fuel inventories for the week. In gasoline, the agency estimated the inventory to be increased 
3.3 million barrels in the week ending July 12th with production at 9.5 million barrels. It's pretty interesting. Oil prices were there right now at the time I'm recording this are 82.93 for basic WTI crude and Brent is 84.73. So, and let's go to the next one here. Oil and gas exports are increasingly important for Canada's economy. Alongside surging production, Canada's oil and gas exports jumped into the period 2002 to 2022. Canada saw a record oil high production in 2023 amid the expanding oil sands output. I sure wish we were getting a lot more of those oil sands in, on by instead of by rail. Combined crude oil, NGLs, and natural gas exports accounted for roughly 20% of Canada's total exports. That is huge. Well done, Canada. That is just nuts. Record high oil production data from statistics in Canada showed export terms of volume last year rising by another 3.2%. With improved access to global markets, Canadians can now look forward to receiving higher value for our energy resources, meaning more money coming into the economy. This is important because they take the, we buy Canadian oil at such a lower rate that it is nice that they can ship it out now to the open markets. Hats off to Canada. Let's get them some more oil, more money. India ups LNG imports in June. This is important. A country, India received about 2.64 billion cubic meters or 2 million metric tons of LNG via long-term contract, a rise of 11.4% compared to the same time last year. That's important. India paid $1.1 billion in June for LNG imports compared to the $1 billion in June of last year and paid $3.2 billion in the April-June period, down from three point four billion during the same period. Pretty important when we take a look at the importance of eliminating pollution. I hope they can get all the LNG that they can. And if you have any LNG or crude oil that you would like to buy or sell, go to energynewsbeat.co forward slash trading desk and get in touch with us there. We'll hook you up with the right traders. Hey, let's come over here to the last story here. Elon Musk explains why Tesla's robo taxi event is delayed. Bloomberg reported that the event had been delayed from August 8th to October, was delayed laid internally and the design team was told to modify some aspects of the vehicle requested was what I think an important design change to the front and extra time allows us to show off a few other things. I think that this is one of the reasons that Tesla's Tesla cars, Tesla's taxi and Tesla's move from California and moving out of California, all things, Elon, I love Tesla. I hope that this goes really well. Uh, Miss producer, if you could bring up the new thing, I got tickled at Elon. The cyber truck has a slopey roof on it. So the secret service snipers out there won't be able to use it for a uh, shooting platform. So that's a whole market that is really out there and hats off to Elon for having a little bit of sense of humor with his slopey roof on the uh, cyber truck. I don't know that we would have any cyber truck uh, taxis out there, but uh Pretty funny stuff out there. So with that, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your family. And we really appreciate all the wonderful feedback that we're getting. And thank you. And by the way, wear your Trump gear out there, folks. Buckle up. It's voting season. Have a great one. See you.